want to welcome all of His Glory Ministry from east to west and north to south. We bring you the week of Bible prophecy. Just going to talk about some of the things that have happened this week and how it ties into God's end time Bible prophecy and the, uh, that He has given to the prophets. Remember, in the book of Hosea, uh, God says He doesn't do anything unless He tells His servants, the prophets, first. So we look to the prophets and we look at prophecy as very important uh, in the eyes of uh, God the Father and very, eyes, uh, very important in the eyes of Jesus Christ because he gave us the signs. He wanted us to know the signs and seasons. Remember when he said to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, you can read the, the color of the sky and you can discern the weather, but you can't discern the times, meaning you can't tell that I am the Messiah that the prophets talked about uh, long, long ago. So Jesus wants us to be aware of the prophecies. God wants us to know the prophecies of this book. That's why there's a blessing in the book of Revelation uh, three times to read the prophecies of this book, knowing the Old Testament prophets to become true. And um, so that's extremely important. We know that 27.5% of the Bible is prophecy. So that God is telling you how much time and effort and ink that he's put into his word, knowing that Bible prophecy is for us and he wants us to know. Okay, just this week, first of all, uh, Shabbat Shalom to everyone. Uh, this is the Shabbat in Israel. And you say, okay, that's great for the Jewish people, but I am, uh, I'm a Gentile, I'm from Pakistan, or I'm from India, I'm from the United States, or wherever. Well, we know in the millennial reign that we will be celebrating the Shabbat with the Lord. The, the Jewish festivals will be with us forever. The seven festivals of the Lord, specifically three times, we will go up to God's holy city, Jerusalem, the Feast of Passover, which is coming up in the next uh, uh, month and a half, two months. Uh, and then we'll have Shabbat, which is uh, Pentecost, which is 40 day, 49 days, again from uh, Passover, and then the Feast of Tabernacle. The Feast of Nap So those will be the three requirements under God's uh, festivals. Again, God always moves on his festivals. That's why we want to watch this year very closely. This is the year of the Jubilee. So mighty things are going to happen, are already starting to happen in the spiritual realm and the earthly realm, watching God's holy book and watching God's holy prophetic jubilee, and also around the times and seasons of his festivals. He always moves on his festivals. Just this week, we look at the nation of Israel. We have the Star of David here. Uh, Hamas took a rocket shot at uh, Israel this week. It was intercepted by their uh, intermediate ballist, uh, ballistic system. Uh, remember we said a couple weeks ago that the, uh, all three uh, missile systems in Israel are now in place. And since then, there has been five rocket attacks this week. Uh, they've gotten the, the, the third level, which is uh, that which they can intercept long distance from the, from, the, uh, from the satellite, knock them down in orbit. Then they put in David's sling, which is the medium range which would have the ability to shut down Iran's uh, ballistic missiles when they, they come out. And then they have their regular uh, upgraded Patriot system to knock out the smaller missiles that, that came from Hamas and come from Sinai. It's amazing how the technology God is giving to his people. Uh, just absolutely brilliant. And the offensive weapons that Israel has are literally second to only the United States. And uh, you don't mess with Israel because not only does God have their back, but they're a mighty army. They, they, they create a, a mighty pack. Uh, a mighty punch, and they will punch back. Uh, ISIS today, uh, over the, the last th this last week, sh fired four missiles from the Sinai in Egypt uh, towards is or, or towards Israel, now, escalating the first time that ISIS has actually taken missiles. Again, we look at uh, Damascus uh, being no more. Isaiah 17. Uh, if if ISIS can get their hands on a uh, a biological weapon. Uh, and shoot that towards Israel, that would give them the reason to take out the city of Damascus. We see Hamas um, in uh, Hezbollah, again, getting ready for Psalm 83. It's not if, it's going to happen. They're prepared to do that. They're, 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 they're gathering up their forces, they're creating the tunnels again, and they're ready to go. It's going to be a big week as uh, Benjamin Netanyahu comes to the United States. We'll see a lot of things that happen uh, with the, with, uh, the President of the United States and Benjamin Netanyahu showing the support not only to the United Nations, but also to the world that we have Israel's back. And again, those who bless you, I will bless. And those who uh, curse you, I will curse. Iran, we see, is uh, the Persian Empire, trying to rebuild the Persian Empire again, is escalating everything, not only in the, uh, the tip of Yemen, as we talked about last week, but they're also uh, death to America in the streets, that threatening Trump. 
And uh, they got to be, as he, as President Trump says, you better be careful of what you're doing because uh, you don't want to, uh, you you don't want to get the sleeping giant to awake. Um, so Benjamin Netanyahu coming to the United States is going to be a big thing. Uh, Hamas just this week has uh, got uh, the nation of Ireland. Ireland is pushing the United Nations to recognize uh, Palestine as its own state. Woe to Ireland. I, I pray for all those who follow his glory in Ireland and all of those people in Ireland to pray, biblically pray that your government changes their way because, again, I'll bless those who bless you and I'll curse those who curse you. That's a big deal. And I'm Irish myself. I'm Jewish and Irish. So I pray that uh, my, my bloodline of the Irish people wake up and follow God's word, not man's word. We have to follow the word of the Lord. And that's why we see this division throughout the world, this division of the Antichrist is coming across uh, the world as we see. Um, so watch Israel with the United States this week. There's also Hamas is talking about uh, taking uh, the, uh, the, the, the recent settlement expansion in Israel, taking that to the world court. So can you imagine if the world court make, takes this case on and rules against Israel? Then you are really ratcheting up things to a level that we have never seen because then you'll see sanctions and then possibly militaries coming against Israel. We see the United, uh, European Union is for the BDS. We see uh, the European Union trying to uh, go against Israel. Again, uh, we need to reunite, unite with biblical Israel. When we say Israel... We're talking God's holy land and God's holy word. We're not talking about secular Israel. The secular politicians are no different than the politicians of Ireland or the United States. We're talking about the biblical principles of God that he put in place, meaning whose land that is, and following the way of the Most High God for his beloved Jerusalem and for his beloved uh, Israel. And we will all be grafted into that, that, that blessing. We, uh, so that's, uh, we, we mentioned that today is Tuba Shabbat as in uh, the, the Festival of the Trees. It's a Jewish festival, the planting of the trees. We at His Glory uh, purchased a fruit tree in Israel, and uh, we're going to be going to Israel this year. And I uh, hope to see that uh, fruit tree in, in all of its blossoms. So that is a festival in Israel. Zion Oil and Gas uh, is an is a American company that has an office in Caesarea, uh, Israel. And uh, they're, they're, they're about to drill on the head of Joseph, the crown of Joseph. And you study that, you see that God is showing a blessing of oil, natural gas and oil that's on the head or the crown of Joseph. And that's exactly the area where they'll be drilling at the end of March, uh, probably April time frame. Uh, the Lord has told me that Zion Oil and Gas will be hitting oil in his beloved uh, Israel. We know from the scripture that a couple things happened in the end times. Israel is blessed more, time, more than any time in the history. So what could possibly bless Israel more than anything in the history of the world? Remember Solomon, when Solomon was there, was the richest man and it was the, it was the richest country on the face of the earth. So how could it be? And it's just my conjecture that it not only will it be oil and natural gas, but uh, the technologies that the Israel has is second to none, and water. You know, you get into a Great Depression, water is more valuable valuable than oil because, yeah, you can't drive your car, but you need oil or you need water to survive. You need water to grow your food. You need water to, to continue to sustain life. So Israel could have the, the, the potential of having both those. We, we won't go into detail of water. We did that on one of our last uh, segments. The Dead Sea Scrolls, they found the, uh, the 12th cave of Qumran. It's been over 60 years since they've uh, experienced a, uh, a finding like this. Again, no coincidence. Uh, coincidence is not a kosher word uh, from the rabbis. God has a plan. And again, quickly, the Dead Sea Scrolls were found in the Qumran cave back in 1947, showing that the word of God is absolute finite and is absolutely literal. The book of Isaiah was found in its totality. And it matches our Bible in, uh, uh, in the English version almost word for word, uh, about 99%. And the reason I say it's 99%, the only difference is just a translation from a Hebrew word to an uh, English word. And it was been carbon dated to 450 B.C. So we know all the things in the Dead Sea Scrolls, including the book of Isaiah and all the prophecies of Christ, the first coming that came true and the second coming uh, that will come true, 
Uh, they were carbon dated 450 years before Christ was even born, proving the Bible is outside of time and absolutely correct. You can go to our website, www.hisglory.tv. We have a segment showing you how, can you how we prove the Bible true through science, through archaeology, through prophecy, and through the Dead Sea Scrolls. Uh, we're seeing lawless judges uh, throughout the United States. You remember God said, let your scales of justice be equal. Do not have weighted scales. The Lord loves justice, righteous judge, uh, justice, not based on ideology, not based on political. The, we're seeing things that are constitutionally correct being overturned by uh, ideology. And I'm not saying pro-Republican, uh, pro-Democrat. I'm saying pro-God's word. It's God's word. And when you see lawless judges taking, taking, uh, uh, taking the word of God or taking the word on themselves and, 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 and trying to legislate from the bench, we know there's those three equal branches. You have the executive branch, which is the presidency, the judicial, and the Congress. Both the Congress and uh, has voted this in as a law. This is about uh, what the, the president can and cannot do. And the president can take executive orders in, in regards to national security. And we're having a judicial branch overreach. And uh, whether it was Obama uh, reverse or our current president, the Constitution is the Constitution. You cannot uh, change the Constitution. And the reason I bring this up is not, again, pro-Democrat or pro-Republican, but it's talking about lawless judges. That was one of the signs in the end days. That was the end, that was the end of Sodom and Gomorrah. We get that deeper in the book of Yasser, the, the, the turning point for Sodom and Gomorrah where the judges were so corrupt that they went against the word of God and they went against morality. They went against common sense and they went against the wisdom of making sure the scales were weighted uh, in justice and righteousness from the Lord. And that's why the Lord stepped into Sodom and Gomorrah. It wasn't necessarily the sin of the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, the homosexuality, and it, it went far, far deeper than just homosexuality. It was much, much uglier at that particular time. But the two key reasons why God stepped in, one was society said that's okay now, that's politically correct. We're allowing that to happen. Same thing's happening in America today. We're saying that's politically correct. No, God's word has never changed. It's not, we're not giving in to political correctness. And the judges were not righteous. They were not doing the will of the way. Um, and we, we'll get deeper in that in our, our study in the book of Yasser, how one of, uh, one of uh, Shem's daughter was uh, actually uh, killed because of that because she was helping somebody and the judges ruled against her. So lawless judges and division. Jesus said, remember, that you, households will be divided. And we're seeing the nation of the United States divided like no time before. And we see them divided over the silliest things. We're getting arguments in Congress and, and the Senate and people that are inside families are fighting over the most ridiculous things. It's gotten so out of control, we need to take a step back and relax and say, who's truly in charge? God Almighty. And we need to go to our Bible to make sure that we're following the Bible. Because whether you like our president or like the last president, whether you're Republican or Democrat, doesn't matter. God tells us in his word that we're supposed to honor the, 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 the government as long as they're more doing the things to God's commandments, precepts and commandments, because God put them in place. So if we're not doing that, we're openly going out against him we're pushing the, the, the envelope to, to, to question whether we're walking the walk of what Jesus says because the Apostle Paul makes that very clear from the Lord in the book of Romans. We have to honor it because God put him in place. Whether you're pro him or not, you need to be pro United States. Uh, somebody said the other day, which makes perfect sense, for somebody on the left to, to wish Donald Trump to be a failure would be like driving down the road 65 miles an hour and you're in a bus and you're wishing your bu bus driver would, would, uh, would fail. We're all going to go off the cliff. You pray for whoever's in. You pray whether you're a Republican for the, for the Democrats and vice versa. We need to unite as one country under God. That's the key thing. It doesn't matter who our president is. It matters who our God is. And we need to make sure that we are honoring our God with his precepts and commandments and doing what Jesus said. Love your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Not Christians because of left or right scre screaming at each other over the most uh, unbelievable things. And I saw a, 
it just broke my heart because there's a there's a professional athlete that I, I allowed my son to get his uh, jersey and and stuff like that because of his his faith and his walk in in in, in the Most High God and came out and made a political uh, a statement and called our president uh, you know uh, uh, what you would call a donkey but not in a very good way and I thought to myself why 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 would you ever do that for any reasons no matter what your political uh, your, your political point is people are looking up to you and if you call yourself a Christian you need to be that beacon of light not calling the president whether you like him or not whether you're Republican or Democrat uh, th that word uh, you, you are not walking as a beacon of light in the name of the Most High God through Jesus Christ he says love our neighbor whether you agree with him or not love them r r build them up so we're seeing that uh, happening throughout the world or through the United States this division but many prophecies have been coming up in the last few weeks that, uh, that all, a lot of prophetic words are coming up to many different people. And it's the same word that the God is giving to me and others that I see across the country. And that is there's just a spiritual Jezebel hitting our country right now. It's shaking it up. And God wants to shake our country up. Whether we like it or not, he's going to shake this country up and get us back and seeking his face. So this month of February is a very strong spiritual war that we need to be praying every day for this release of the anointing oil that's going to come around in the spring. I believe it'll be right around his, his Jewish festivals of Passover, uh, first fruit and un unleavened bread. And there will be a drenching of anointing oil. There will be a drenching of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We need to stay strong and stay prayer. And if we find we're getting ourselves into this political mess, take a step back, take a breath. Realize, what are the most important things in life? Arguing over something that's so silly that's going to divide everybody or doing what Jesus told us to do, following what God told us to do, being morally right, and being a monarch. Our president is a president of the government. He's, not, he's, a, he's a president of the government. Yes, we're supposed to honor him because the, the scripture tells us, but our king is the king of kings, lord of hosts. He's a, we're a monarch. We always, we always look to him first. He is what's going to deliver us. No president's going to deliver us. It's only the guiding hand of the Lord Most High. We see uh, uh, abortion, which is just, uh, 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 just horrible in the eyes of the Lord. There's over 60 million that have been aborted in the United States, and the United States needs to get, to get this under control and repent. Uh, you know, whether it was the technology, we didn't know when the life would be or not. God says the life uh, uh, starts at conception, and we need to trust him, and we need to believe him, and we need to honor him. Well, in the state of Pennsylvania, we see that a, uh, a, a governor uh, overruled, vetoed a bill that came in allowing uh, abortion and uh, uh, up to the 20th week. That means that child is almost five months old. You've got to be kidding me. We've got to go back to the common sense of God's word. That's a life, and that life is precious, and we pray for the repentance of these people. Apostasy in the church, we see the United Methodist Church uh, openly has uh, a, uh, a lesbian as a minister. They see that the, their, uh, their, their, their uh, donations are going down, and they're pleading with, their, with the Methodist people to continue to keep giving. Again, God is going to, uh, he's going to bless based on his precepts and commandments. You're doing something against the name of the Lord. He's not going to honor that. Uh, skies and the, the stars in the skies, seasons, uh, signs that Jesus said would be in the stars. Yesterday, we had a very unique thing that happened, and I don't know the last time this happened or it's ever happened, but it was called a triple sign snow moon, and that was a lunar eclipse with a full moon with a comet streaking right behind it. And that, as far as I know, is extremely, extremely rare. That happened last night all over the world. And again, as we look at uh, uh, earthquakes, there was earthquakes again. Uh, there was at least one earthquake every day last week. But there was a major one in the Philippines two days ago. Uh, actually, it was yesterday. It was a 7.5 in the Philippines in their uh, earthquake, and it uh, was causing a potential uh, tsunami warning. So these are just the basics of, I could go on and on and on and on and on and what the Bible prophecies are happening. Again, one of the things that the prophet Daniel said in the book of Daniel, you can get our Daniel study on www.hisglory.tv. In the end of days, knowledge will go to and fro. Not only knowledge of, 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 of the world speeding up and, and iPhones and supercomputers and technology, but the revealing, revealing of the Lord. He's revealing himself. And when we watch what Jesus said, those signs and seasons are all around us. 
and all the things the prophet said would happen are falling into play perfectly. We're into the season of Ezekiel 37, dry bones. The, 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 the nation of Israel. The, Israel, the hearts of Israel, are the people are coming unblinded. The blindness is starting to go away. More people from the Jewish, uh, from Jewish, Jewishness and Judaism are coming to find the Messiah, Jesus Christ, as their Lord and Savior, like no time in uh, the history of the world. We're seeing Muslims all over the world looking to the Messiah, Jesus Christ, as their Lord and Savior. Praise his name. Mighty, mighty waves are coming. We mentioned earlier that this is a very, very spiritual war that God is going to prevail in, that this month of February to be in prayer because there's going to be an anointing of the holy oil coming and a drenching of the outpouring of the Spirit upon us. This is going to be a supernatural year. Yes, the world is melting down. Yes, there's lots of signs and seasons. But we know where our home is. Our home is on high. And there will be joy in these seasons. Not joy because the world's melting down. Joy that the Spirit of the Lord is coming upon us. That we can be a beacon of light. A beacon of hope to the world that is, has no hope. We can give them that own hope. That only hope that is eternal hope that comes through the Savior Jesus Christ. That's why these these, these, uh, these melting downs are, have actually been a blessing in many ways. More people are coming to Jesus Christ from the Middle East than any time before because they're seeking him because they have to. And we want to go out and share the gospel from east to west to north to south to bring in that last harvest before our Messiah comes. And we pray this week and prophecy has been a blessing to you. And may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless you till next week. God bless you.